children, and welcome back to Storytime with Winnie and Nan. The stories that we're going to read today all have to do with making friends and being friends. And to do the crafts today, these are the things that you'll need to gather so you'll be ready to do the crafts. The things that you'll need are three pieces of paper. I used white paper. One piece of colored paper, any color you choose an envelope, a red and a black magic marker, some crayons, two black pipe cleaners, an egg carton, and a glue stick. Okay, the first story that we're going to read is called A Friend for Bo. And the author of this story is Elizabeth Zuniga. This is a story about finding a new friend in some place that you would never suspect. A Friend for Bo by Elizabeth Zuniga. It was a perfect day for playing, except for one thing. Bo had no one to play with. So he set out to find a friend. What's this? Bo asked. Hello. Why, hello. You seem rather shy, Bo said. That's okay. I like shy. Bo named his new friend Roly. Bo took Roly home. Let's play dress up, suggested Bo, but Roly didn't reply. Or maybe you'd like to read a story, but Roly couldn't see the pictures, so Bo helped him out. Now Roly smiled. Bo thought Roly would like a picnic. Along the way, Bo saw three butterflies. Look, Bo said to Roly, butterflies. But Roly didn't look. Surprise, said Bo. We're going sailing. But Roly didn't say anything. Here, have a cookie, Bo said, but Roly didn't take one. And when the little boat rocked, Roly dove right into the picnic basket. Oh no, you smashed the cookies. Bo was so sad, but Roly just smiled. I think we should go now, Bo said. But Roly didn't want to leave. So Bo had to help him out of the boat. Well, I hope you had a good time today, said Bo. When they got home, Bo was ready to call it a day. So was Roly. Won't you please make room for me? asked Bo, but Roly didn't budge. Poor Bo curled up on the rug and fell fast asleep until... Oh, Roly, what's the matter? Bo asked. Then he heard a loud... Crack! Peep, peep! Why, it's a duckling! What a lovely surprise! Peep, peep! Bo knew exactly what to do with a little duckling. Play! 
and the little duckling loved to play. Now Bo has two friends, but Roly still doesn't talk much. Okay, children, the second book that we're going to share with you also has to do with friends and making friends and the way friends help each other. And the name of this book is That's What Friends Are For. And the authors, there's two authors of this book, it's Florence Parry Hyde and Sylvia Von Cleef. That's What Friends Are For by Florence Parry Hyde and Sylvia Von Cleef. Theodore the elephant is sitting in the middle of the forest. He has hurt his leg. What a pity. Today, Theodore was going to meet his cousin at the end of the forest. What can I do? Theodore says. My cousin is at the end of the forest, and here I am in the middle of the forest. And I have a bad leg, and I can't walk. I know what I'll do, Theodore says. I'll ask my friends for advice. That's what friends are for. Along comes Theodore's friend, the bird. Why are you sitting here in the middle of the forest? asks the bird. Because I have a bad leg and I can't walk, and I can't meet my cousin at the end of the forest, says Theodore. If I had a bad leg, I would fly to the end of the forest, says the bird to Theodore. It's nice of you to give advice, says Theodore the bird. That's what friends are for, says the bird. Along comes Theodore's friend, the Daddy Longlegs. Why are you sitting here in the middle of the forest, asks the Daddy Longlegs. Because I have a bad leg, and I can't walk, and I can't fly, and I can't meet my cousin at the end of the forest, says Theodore. If I had a bad leg, says the Daddy Longlegs, I would walk anyhow because I have seven other legs. It's nice of you to give advice, says Theodore. That's what friends are for, says the Daddy Longlegs. Along comes Theodore's friend, the monkey. Why are you sitting here in the middle of the forest, asks the monkey. Because I have a bad leg, and I can't walk, and I can't fly, and I don't have seven other legs, and I can't meet my cousin at the end of the forest, says Theodore. Well, if I had a bad leg, said the monkey, I would swing by my tail from the trees like this. Well, says Theodore, I may have a very weak tail, but... I have a strong trunk. So Theodore grabs the tree with his trunk. Crash! Well, anyhow, says Theodore, thanks for your advice. That's what friends are for, says the monkey. Along comes Theodore's friend, the crab. Why are you lying down in the middle of the forest? asks the crab. Because I have a bad leg, and I can't walk, and I can't fly, I don't have seven on the legs, and I can't swing from the trees by my tail or my trunk, and I can't meet my cousin at the end of the forest, says Theodore. If I had a bad leg, says the crab, I would get rid of it and grow another one. It's nice of you to give advice, says Theodore. That's what friends are for, says the crab. Along comes Theodore's friend, the lion. Why are you sitting here in the middle of the forest, asks the lion. 
because I have a bad leg and I can't walk and I can't fly and I don't have seven other legs and I can't swing from the trees by my tail or my trunk, I can't grow another leg and I can't meet my cousin at the end of the forest, says Theodore. Well, if I had a bad leg, says the lion, I would roar so loud that everyone would come running to see what was the matter. And he roars. What's all the noise? The opossum asks. He is hanging upside down by his tail. Theodore can't fly, says the bird. He can't get to the end of the forest to see his cousin, says the lion. We are giving him advice, says the crab. That's what friends are for. Nonsense, says the opossum. Friends are to help. Bring the cousin to Theodore. So, all the friends go to find Theodore's cousin at the end of the forest. And they bring the cousin to Theodore. Theodore and his cousin and all the friends are having a party. Thank you for helping me, says Theodore to his friends. That's what friends are for, say the friends. For our first craft, what you'll need is you'll need two pieces of paper, you'll need a marker, a scissors, something to trace your hands, a glue stick, and a crayon. And this is what we're going to make. You're going to make a heart-shaped gift for a friend that has a heart in the middle with your, with your hands to give them as a gift. So the way I did this is I took my hands and I put them on the paper and then I traced them one at a time. So let me show you how I did that. I'll take my marker I'll take my first hand and I'm going to trace it around my fingers. Okay, that's my first hand. The second one you may need somebody to help you because it's kind of tough to do with your other hand, but I'm going to make them hit each other so that I make a heart with my second hand. And I'm going to try to trace with my other hand. So this is a little more tricky. And you can come around and you want them to try to match in the middle. There you go. We'll go around your fingers. Okay. And you end up with, if you turn it upside down, you end up with a heart in the middle. So then what I did is I took, I cut out my hands and I wrote my name and my friend that I chose is Winnie. And then I took my crayon and I colored it in and you can color it any color you would like. I chose blue and I colored it in and then with my glue stick, I can glue it on the paper and I can just put some glue on the back. And then this makes a nice gift to present to your friend. And it has both of your names and that's your hands with a nice little heart in the middle. So you can create one of these for a friend. The next book that we're going to read, children, is Frog and Toad Are Friends. And this is by Arnold Lobel. And this is a series of books that you can get and you can enjoy. And it's all about Frog and Toad and how they are best friends and how they help each other. So the first one that we're going to read is called a lost button.
Frog and Toad are Friends by Arnold Lobel. A Lost Button. Toad and Frog went for a walk. They walked across a large meadow. They walked in the woods. They walked along the river. At last, they went back home to Toad's house. Oh, drat, said Toad. Not only do my feet hurt, but I have lost one of the buttons on my jacket. Don't worry, said Frog. We will go back to all the places where we walked. We will soon find your button. They walked back to the large meadow. They began to look for the button in the tall grass. Here is your button, cried Frog. That is not my button, said Toad. That button is black. My button was white. Toad put the black button in his pocket. A sparrow flew down. Excuse me, said the sparrow. Did you lose a button? I found one. That is not my button, said Toad. That button has two holes. My button has four holes. Toad put the button with two holes in his pocket. They went back to the woods and looked on the dark paths. Here is your button, said Frog. That is not my button, cried Toad. That button is small. My button was big. Toad put the small button in his pocket. A raccoon came out from behind a tree. I heard that you were looking for a button, he said. This is one that I just found. That is not my button, wailed Toad. That button is square. My button was round. Toad put the square button in his pocket. Frog and Toad went back to the river. They looked for the button in the mud. Here is your button, said Frog. That is not my button, shouted Toad. That button is thin, and my button was thick. Toad put the thin button in his pocket. He was very angry. He jumped up and down and screamed. The whole world is covered with buttons, and not one of them is mine. Toad ran home and slammed the door. There on the floor he saw his white, four-holed, big, round, thick button. Oh, said Toad, it was here all the time. What a lot of trouble I have made for Frog. Toad took all of the buttons out of his pocket. He took his sewing box down from the shelf. And Toad sewed all the buttons all over his jacket. The next day, Toad gave his jacket to Frog. Frog thought it was beautiful. He put it on and jumped for joy and none of the buttons fell off. Toad had sewed them on very well. And the second story we're gonna read about Frog and Toad is called The Letter. Toad was sitting on his front porch. Frog came along and said, what is the matter, Toad? You are looking sad. Yes, said Toad, this is my sad time of day. It is the time when I wait for the mail to come. It makes me very unhappy. Why is that, asked Frog. Because I never get any mail, said Toad. Not ever, asked Frog. No, never, said Toad. No one has ever sent me a letter. Every day my mailbox is empty. That is why waiting for the mail is a sad time for me. Frog and Toad sat on the porch, feeling sad together. Then Frog said, Hmm, I have to go home now, Toad. There is something that I must do. And Frog hurried home. He found a pencil and a piece of paper. He wrote on the paper. He put the paper in an envelope, and on the envelope he wrote, A letter for Toad. Frog ran out of his house. He saw a snail that he knew. Snail, said Frog, please take this letter to Toad's house and put it in his mailbox. Sure, said the snail, right away. Then Frog ran back to Toad's house. 
Toad was in bed taking a nap. Toad, said Frog, I think you should get up and wait for the mail some more. No, said Toad, I'm tired of waiting for the mail. Frog looked out the window at Toad's mailbox. The snail was not there yet. Toad, said Frog, you never know when someone may send you a letter. No, no, said Toad, I do not think anyone will ever send me a letter. Frog looked out the window. The snail was not there yet. But Toad, said Frog, someone may send you a letter today. Don't be silly, said Toad. No one has ever sent me a letter before, and no one will send me a letter today. Frog looked out the window. The snail was still not there. Frog, why do you keep looking out the windows, asked Toad. Because now I am waiting for the mail, said Frog. But there will not be any, said Toad. Frog and Toad waited a long time. Four days later, the snail finally got to Toad's house and gave him the letter from Frog. Toad was very pleased to have it. The second craft we're going to do today, children, is to write a letter just like Frog wrote to Toad. And I thought it would be nice to write a letter to my friend, Jim. And Jim is the person that films Storytime with Winnie and Nan. And I thought I could write him a letter to say thank you for the good job he does in filming Storytime with Winnie and Nan for us. So here I have a piece of paper and I folded it in four. I folded it once and I folded it again and I wrote on the front just the way Frog had I wrote a letter for Jim and I'm going to write him a little letter inside to thank him for the good work that he does for us. So I'm going to put his name and I'm going to say, Jim, thank you for filming story time. with Winnie and Nan. And I'm going to sign my name because I'm Nan. And then you can ask a grown-up to help you, and you need an envelope, you can ask a grown-up to help you to put that in the mailbox, and you can write the person's name and address on the front. And I'm going to start that, and I'm just going to write Jim, and I'll finish his address after. And you can do the same thing that Frog did. The next story we're going to read, children, is called Charlie the Caterpillar. And this is a story by Dom de Louise. And this is a story that talks about the true meaning of friendship. Charlie the Caterpillar by Dom de Louise. One day, one bright and sunny day, Charlie the Caterpillar was born. The world looked very, very big to Charlie because he was very, very small, because he was just born. Charlie soon found out how delicious green things tasted. As he was nibbling on a blade of grass, he could hear the wind whistling and the birds singing. He smiled. He was glad to be alive. Charlie decided to set out and see the world. So he looked to the left and he looked to the right and then he went straight ahead. Soon, Charlie saw two monkeys. Hi, said Charlie, what are you doing? We're playing cards, they said. Oh, said Charlie, that sounds like fun. Can I play too? No, you can't, said the monkeys. Why not, asked Charlie. Because you're an ugly caterpillar. Now get out of here. Charlie, for the very first time in his young life, felt bad. He sighed and would have shrugged his shoulders if he had any. He looked to the left and he looked to the right and then he went straight ahead.
pretty soon he saw two rabbits hopping around. Hi, said Charlie. What are you doing? We're playing tennis, they said. Oh, said Charlie, that looks like fun. Can I play too? No, you can't, said the rabbits. Why not, asked Charlie. Because you're just an ugly caterpillar, and we don't play with ugly caterpillars. Now get out of here. Now, for the second time in his young life, Charlie felt bad, very bad. His feelings were hurt. What is ugly, wondered Charlie. I don't feel ugly. He looked to the left, and he looked to the right, and then he went straight ahead. Just then, Charlie saw two mice playing miniature golf. These mice were so small that they had to play miniature golf. Hi, said Charlie, what are you doing? We're playing golf, they answered. Oh, said Charlie, that really looks like fun. Can I play too? No, you can't, said the mice. Why not, asked Charlie. Because you're an ugly caterpillar, and we don't play with ugly caterpillars. Charlie, for the third time in his now not-so-young life, felt very bad. In fact, he started to kind of feel ugly. No one wanted to play with him. So Charlie looked to his left, he looked to his right, and then he started to cry. Charlie wanted to be alone. So he climbed up a tree and snuggled up to a small branch. He felt a little cold. So he went like this and he went like that and he went like this and he went like that. And before he knew it, he had spun himself a warm and wonderful cocoon. Charlie was very sad about all this ugly business. Why can't I have a friend, he wondered. Charlie was so tired from making the cocoon that he decided he would take a nap. All of a sudden, snow began to fall, and to cover everything with white winter had come. But Charlie was nice and warm in his comfortable cocoon. Charlie dreamed that he had a best friend, and that they laughed and had fun together. After a while, the grass began to grow, the flowers began to bloom, and the birds began to have a party in the sky. Spring had come, and somehow Charlie knew it was time to wake up. He yawned and stretched, and then, oh my goodness, pop, pop, Charlie looked to his left, and he looked to his right, and oh, he had wings, beautiful wings, butterfly wings. Charlie had become a beautiful butterfly. Charlie fluttered his wings, and guess what? He flew up, up, and up. He laughed as he soared past the birds having a party in the sky. Charlie was flying high when he came upon the monkeys, who were still playing cards. Oh, please come and play with us, begged the monkeys. Why, asked Charlie. Because you're a beautiful butterfly, they answered. No, thanks said Charlie, smiling. I gotta get out of here. He zoomed up and away. The monkeys jumped back, looking miserable. Oops. He did a couple of loop-the-loops, and then he came across the rabbits at their tennis game. Oh, please, said the rabbits. Won't you come and play with us? Why, asked Charlie. Because you're such a beautiful butterfly, they answered. Not in your life, said Charlie. Now I gotta get out of here. Then off he flew, leaving the rabbits looking very downhearted. He circled around for a while, and then he saw the mice playing miniature golf. Please, pretty please, pleaded the mice. Do come and play with us. Why, asked Charlie. Because you're really such a beautiful butterfly, they answered. Sorry, not today, said Charlie. I really have better things to do. Now I gotta get out of here. Then off he soared, leaving the mice looking pitiful. 
They all wanted to be his friend because he was now a beautiful butterfly. They didn't know that he was Charlie, the ugly caterpillar. If you want to be my friends just because of my beautiful wings, they can't be real friends, thought Charlie as he fluttered in the spring sunshine. Just then, Charlie heard someone crying. It was Katie the caterpillar. Charlie came closer. Why are you crying, he asked. Because no one wants to play with me. No one wants to be my friend, cried Katie because I'm just an ugly caterpillar. I'll play with you, said Charlie with a wink and a smile. I'll be your friend. You will, said Katie the caterpillar. Whoopee! Then Charlie took Katie aside and told her all about becoming a butterfly. From that day on, Charlie and Katie played cards and tennis and even miniature golf together. They laughed and had a good time, just like in Charlie's dream. Katie was happy and Charlie was very happy. He had finally found a friend, a real friend, a best friend. The craft that we're going to do to go along with Charlie the Caterpillar is to make an insect. A caterpillar is an insect and an insect has three body parts and six legs. My favorite insect is a ladybug and this is one of my ladybugs that I have in my collection. So I'm going to put that there and I'm going to show you how I made a ladybug. So what you'll need to do this craft, this is, is an egg carton that I cut into three sections, cut three sections out of the egg carton. You'll need some black pipe cleaners and you'll need a red and a black magic marker and a scissors to cut out the egg carton. And you're probably going to need some help from a, a grown up to help you do this. So what I did is I cut three sections of the egg carton and I punched holes, two on the top for the ladybug's antenna and three on each side for the ladybug's legs. Then I took my red magic marker and my black magic marker and I colored the egg carton red first and then I painted on with the black magic marker the dots and I put two eyes, and mine is a happy cat, a ladybug, so I gave mine a, a smiley face. I gave her a happy face. And then I took my pipe cleaner, and I cut the pipe cleaner into small pieces, like this, and I used the small pieces for the six legs. So you, this is what you can create. You can create a ladybug just like I did. The last story that I'm going to share with you today, children, is called Good Night, Good Dog. The dog knows the click of the lamp when the light is turned off. He knows the sounds the dark makes, those small night sounds. He also knows the quiet that comes, the moon quiet. He knows the shadows in the corners of the room. And he knows his bed, round like the moon. But the dog isn't sleepy yet. He remembers the yellow ball of sun bouncing across the sky. He remembers how he chased it, running in the grass. He remembers his toys. He remembers his dish. He remembers words he knows, like come, good boy, and good night. 
Good night. He isn't ready to sleep. Good night, good dog. He likes those words, the way they curl around him, just like his moon round bed. Except he's not sleepy, not the dog, but the houses are, so the houses sleep. Children sleep. The night is still. But the dog isn't sleepy. Maybe only a little. Just a little. Maybe he can dream back the sun. Then he might go to sleep. So the dog makes himself snug and says to himself, Good night, good dog. Then he closes his eyes and soon he has dreamed the sun. So he dreams some blue sky. He dreams some green grass. And then someone is saying, Good morning, good dog, because a new day is waiting. Well, children, I hope you enjoyed the stories and the crafts that we did today on Storytime with Winnie and Nan. And remember, you can email us at winnieandnan at gmail.com and let us know if there's a story or a craft that you would like us to do. Until I see you next time, bye-bye.